Hello everyone, I'm Shani Bakshi and on this channel I usually travel the world via books, meaning I read one book from every country in the world. However, today I'm taking a bit of a break and doing a five books to get you into love reading um, kind of video, which means I'll be recommending five books that I hope will get non-readers to enjoy reading. But this can work as a recommendations video for anyone, but um, I would warn you, most of these recommendations are really popular books, so if you are a avid reader, you probably have read most of them. Okay, without further ado, let's get into the first book, which is my favorite book of all time, Six of Crows. Six of Crows. So, um, Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo is actually this spin-off novel to um, a really popular fantasy series called the Grisha Trilogy. Um, so I won't go be going into what that is about, however, if you're kind of scared about reading a spin-off without reading the original, I recommend just going through like the fandom page for the original Grisha Trilogy to get the idea of the magical like world, because overall the original trilogy wasn't as good as Six of Crows, so I definitely wouldn't recommend slogging through it. Future Ashani here. Um, also, I just wanted to know, the original trilogy does not actually have much to do with Six of Crows, so you won't be missing like anything plot-wise. Anyways, so Six of Crows basically follows Kaz Brecker, who is this criminal mastermind 16 year old living in Ketterdam, a fictional city. And the story really starts off when he is offered a million Kruger if he can secure this random item from the Ice Palace, which is one of the high, highly, most highly secured establishments slash prisons in their um, fictional world. So he, of course, d agrees to do that. So, but before he can start on his mission, he has to assemble a crew. So the crew consists of Inej Gatha, who is an assassin who is very wise and has a really dark past that um, is quite unfortunate and definitely makes the reader cry. Um, and it has Nina Zenik, who is a heart render, uh, one of the magicians of the world, who, ha who has been separated from her kind, the Grisha, when she was uh, pretty young and has been living in Ketterdam ever since. It follows Matthias, who is a convict with a thirst for revenge. And it has Wylan, who is a runaway with a mysterious past and a personality of a cinnamon roll. And it has, uh, last but not least, Jesper, who is my favorite character, um, and he is an absolute fun time, and he can um, he, has, he can shoot really well, but he also has a gambling problem. So um, I really hope you remember everything I said, because I definitely didn't introduce a lot of characters. But, you know, the book has a lot of characters, and these characters are all amazing. They all have such distinct personalities that make you fall in love with each and every one of them. And it, it's an amazing book series, and I would read it just for the characters. I mean. If Lee Bardugo made a book of these characters just sitting and, you know, talking about, like, anything, I would read it because these characters are just that amazing. But even apart from the characters, the plot is really amazing. <laughs> I use amazing too much. But um, the plot is really intricate and clever because the, the, the character of Kaz just comes up with so many different um, plans and ideas on how to... Um, infiltrate the ice palace and the twist and turns will keep you on your feet and it also has a bit of an emotional punch so the next book i'll be talking about is the curious incident of a dog in the nighttime by um uh, by uh, mark haddon and this basically follows a christopher who is a kid with autism and in his neighborhood this dog has been killed and as an animal lover and Sherlock lover, it is his noble responsibility to find out who killed the dog. And throughout the story, he um, learns more about the mystery and also about his own family secrets. And we get to follow him traveling through um, his um, hometown and eventually London, um, all while trying to find out who did the who murdered this dog and um, what's going on in his own family. And it's an absolutely beautiful and amazing book because just the way the author describes certain scenarios and emotions is so heart-wrenching. And um, just overall the plot and the twists and the turns are definitely something I didn't expect, um, especially the parts about the family secrets. And overall, it is a great book that I think anyone can enjoy and it's also really short. Okay, so... Uh, Third book I'll be recommending is Normal People by Sally Rooney. I don't have a physical hobby, so I'll be 
putting a picture at some time but um normal people basically follows marianne and connell so marianne is this really rich girl who is very unsocial in her um high school while um connell who also attends the same high school is um kind of um economically challenged and therefore his mother works as a maid for marianne's family and the story basically follows their life interconnecting through high school and then college and it just focuses on how they grow together and grow apart um, through the course of a few years and just how their own past influence who they become and it's an amazing uh, analysis of you know just a lot of real life things like growing up and going to college and you know the dynamic between different people and I definitely recommend Normal People by Sally Rooney to anyone who's looking for a good contemporary book. Okay, so my fourth book is none other than um, The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. So this is a classic and I wanted to just like put one classic in here because I know that they can be especially daunting, but I think this is a great classic. But before I get into it, some of you might be wondering why I didn't recommend a book by Jane Austen, specifically Pride and Prejudice. So um, I'll just leave this in here. Okay, so now that we've established that, um, a picture of Dorian Gray basically follows um, Dorian, who is this absolutely stunning man who gets his um, portrait painted one day. And the story basically follows him and the relationship between him and the portrait and how the portrait bega begins changing and becomes uglier and older while he remains the exact same. He doesn't age. And it just, and it uses a portrait as um, a symbol for how his inner soul is changing and how the, the worse his actions are, the worse the portrait is becoming. And I don't, I don't want to give too much away, but it's just beautifully written and it's just one of the most vile characters in um, literature ever. And I absolutely love a pic the picture of Dorian Gray and I recommend it to absolutely everyone. And also it's a pretty short book, so I think um, you can definitely get through it. And um, also, cool fact, I have never quoted a book as much as Dorian Gray and that's because Oscar Wilde is one of the wittiest and cleverest authors I have ever read. Okay, now the last book i would be recommending is Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zahner who is also a indie artist called Japanese Breakfast I think. So I don't usually like memoirs because I just find them a bit boring or sluggish but um, Crying in H Mart is one of the best books I've ever read. And it basically follows um, the relationship between Michelle Zahner and her mother from a very early age to when her mother eventually gets cancer and um, passes away. And it, it's very sad at times, obviously, because of the subject matter, but the author doesn't let that get in the way of being absolutely raw about her memories and doesn't glorify the relationship between her mother and her and, and, and instead actually highlights the flaws and that's what makes the sweet moments between her and her mother even more precious and it's what makes the death of her mother even more hard hitting and overall it's a great memoir i especially recommend um listening it on audiobook because um the author herself narrates it and i just love listening to um a crying age my while walking around my neighborhood so i get some exercise and reading in um, so in conclusion, I hope you check out one of these many books and if you do, please leave a comment and if you've already read one of these books and you do love them, please leave a comment about that as well. And um, tomorrow I'll be posting one of my Read Around the World videos uh, for Argentina, so um, look forward to that and um, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, hit like, hit subscribe and turn on the notifications bell so you do not miss another stop on my Literary World Tour. Bye guys!